here is we're going to take a look at the different attacks that I'll usually use and that I've had success with from the side control. So let's look at some of these uh, finalization techniques once you have side control. One of the things I'm looking for right away is this arm. If I have this type of control and this arm is available to me, one of the ways I'll get it is I'll swing up and in and I'll pop that arm out just a little bit by bringing my forearm across his abs while I hold his bicep. That gives me just a little bit of working room here so that I can attack this arm and, and lock in the uh, Kimura. I'm going to curve my wrist to make it hard for him to straighten out the arm and then I'm going to put his wrist to the mat. My goal is to bring the elbow, his elbow, towards his own ribs as I lift up on the arm here. Being real careful not to injure the shoulder. This arm here, my left arm against his head, blocking his head from looking in, curving my wrist, and then from here, bringing it in and up. So the motion is here and here. Okay? Now, sometimes as I'm fighting for this, he'll straighten it out. That's okay. I still can stay heavy on him. I still can stay heavy and I'm trying to set a straight arm bar here. The leverage coming up on his elbow from behind and down on his wrist. Sometimes to get this even better, I will go ahead and I will make that arm mine with this type of control and I'll switch to here. Okay, so I'm looking for this. This can also eventually in the struggle turn into this, which then in that case I'm going to finalize in a different way. I'm going to go ahead and put my own right elbow to the ground. I'm going to sit my hips through as I turn him a little bit. And rather than trying to finalize here, because sometimes he can gain momentum enough to push me back onto my own back, I will then try to finalize by locking, pulling in, locking my leg over his collarbone, my calf is pulling in on his neck and collarbone, and then moving this arm lock towards the back of his head in this direction for the tap out here, injuring the shoulder. Okay? Alright. Sometimes here, so I'm going to be left out here. Yes. And now I have a couple options. One, the simple one that I like to do is I turn him towards me. I block the back of his head. I turn over. I step over. I turn my hips. And I'm attacking here, here, and here for a typical armbar where I'm going to pull down and I'm going to push up with my hips to attack and hyperextend the elbow. Now, a variation of that, which works real well, is what I call a reverse Kimura. He left his arm out. Notice here, I bring him up. Now, I'm just going to attack the arm in this manner here. Okay. One more time. From here, his arm is out. Okay, I'm taking it in, boom. locking it up, bringing it up, turning the arm in this direction. If I can lock his arm in the process into this, because I've gotten it, that's good. If I can just pin his arm like this, in this process, that's also good. If he's holding on, because he's grabbed Garmin or his own arm, I can put my elbow into his ribs and push that in there for pain, com pain compliance as I pull up to release. I like to not stay on my knees here. I like to put one leg up in case he tries to bump me in that direction. I've got something to stop that motion. The other thing we can do from here, if this is real tight, is I can push this forward a little and it raises his head. Look what it does here. So, I'm fighting here, I push this forward, raises his head, I bring my legs under for a strangle here to finalize with the neck. The arm is really secondary at this point, it becomes a strangle here. 
Okay? Simple attack from the side is these 